If you want a hot, steamy movie to watch for date night, then Anyone But You might be your perfect choice, but not for the reasons that you might think. Now, I took my girlfriend to the press screening of this movie, and she told me, Brandon, I do not want you to see this movie alone because Sydney Sweeney has a knack for, quote, showing her boobs. <laughs> I've actually never seen a TV show or a movie with her in it. Yes, I know that I should be watching Euphoria, but regardless. She was half joking when she said that, but I'm like, you know what? This looks like it could be a fun, kind of trashy rom-com. I don't expect it to be the best thing I've ever seen, but it might be a fun movie to watch for date night. So we saw the movie together and the question still remains, does this movie suck or is it worth a watch? Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really do appreciate it. And on this channel, I just wanna cut through all the toxic fandom and BS of gatekeeping and useless politics and just tell you guys open and honestly what I thought of the movie. And I want you guys to tell me your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Also a big thank you to Into The AM, today's video sponsor. I'm wearing one of their shirts right now. They fit, I'm a six foot eight, 250 pound man. Finding clothes that fit me is a hard task, but not with Into The AM, because they have lots of great designs, it's comfortable. Link is down below for 10% off. So we have Anyone But You, and I was hearing about this movie like everyone was hearing about this movie because of all of the drama behind the scenes. Glenn Powell was married or you know engaged to someone else, and then he broke it off, and then Sydney Sweeney was with someone else, and they broke it off, and then, of course, they were seen you know flirting together in public, whatever. Behind the scenes drama was everywhere. Even people in my office had been saying, this movie gives me the ick. And naturally, you know, I saw Glenn Powell in Top Gun, like almost everybody, right? Of course, I hear Sydney Sweeney's name because every time they ask some 10 year old hockey player who their celebrity crush is, it's Addison Ray or Sydney Sweeney. So I'm like, you know what? Fine, let's go watch this movie. And I mean, if you had seen my YouTube short, you'll know this is the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Okay, it's not that bad, but it's definitely in the conversation to be one of the worst films I've ever seen. Now, my question at the beginning of this video was, is this movie worth a watch, especially for date night? And I'm gonna say yes, because my girlfriend and I had so much fun just like looking at each other every time something really stupid happened in the movie. And we had a really good time basically tearing this movie apart. I'll tell you guys right now, we don't ever go into movies wanting to hate it, right? That's just not who we are. We always wanna enjoy the time that we're having watching the movie. and have a good experience, but we had a good experience for the quote unquote wrong reasons for this movie. I was actually kind of surprised at how bad it was. I wasn't expecting this movie to be, you know, groundbreaking or any Oscar worthy type of performances, but my goodness, this movie was so shallow. Think of like a Nancy Myers movie. The holiday, it's complicated, movies like that, where you have just really good looking white people, you have the one black friend, and everyone just, you know, everyone was falling in love and falling out of love, and you know, everything is just so hunky dory, and there's a lot of money going around, right? But even those movies have some heart to them, those movies have talent behind the camera and talent in front of the camera. The jokes are funny, the movies are enjoyable to watch for the right reasons, but you take out all the heart from a Nancy Myers movie and you put in just this vain, vapid shallowness and you have anyone but you. I was actually kind of shocked at how thin these characters were. They are, they are not characters in this movie because I cannot tell you a single thing about a character's personality. We made the joke as well, there are walking boobs and walking six packs. These are not people. These are just good looking Barbie dolls. Oh look, there's Sydney Sweeney. Her hair is so nice. Her makeup is done so well. She's always wearing the really revealing clothing. Okay, well then this is that one hot girl. And then there's the other hot girl who wants the other hot guy. But then this hot girl is dating this other hot guy. And then this other hot guy wants to be dating this other hot girl. And by the way, just the way that they even, you know, portray these characters in this movie, they're not even people. They're things. And I'm thinking, how can I connect to any of these characters when they are just portrayed as things? Every single guy is ripped and super good looking, every single girl's taking their top off. Like for example, you know, Glenn Powell sees his ex-girlfriend in Australia, right? And the first shot of her, She's like sunbathing on the beach and then she just like gets up, hi Glenn, and her boobs are out and everyone's like, oh my gosh, like in the theater, like there was this one, you know, asshole who was just like, oh yes, 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 go. 
th that's beyond the point. <laughs> now, I just realized that I never actually told you guys the story of this movie, so I should probably do that. You have Glenn Powell and you have Sidney Sweeney and the movie starts there. There's like this meet cute and I'm like, you know what? This is going to be a cute movie. You have this girl who's like struggling with her life in terms of what to do in terms of her career and she wants to find a new boyfriend, but she's been always kind of unlucky with love. But then she meets Glenn Powell and Glenn Powell's a real, you know, sweet guy, but he's kind of the F boy, you know, aesthetic and that whole persona. But he finally sees this girl who can make him open up. You know, he never really talks about his mom, but she has made him talk about his mom on, his, on the first date, really. And she doesn't talk about her career, but on the first night of meeting, she talks about how she doesn't want to be a lawyer. And they connect. And honestly, there are two scenes in this movie where it gave me hope. And I'm going, you know what? This movie has some heart to it. And I think I can really get connected to these characters because I do think that in those two scenes, Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney have some chemistry. But then Sydney Sweeney wakes up and I understand that they actually do play characters in the movie, but let's be honest, they're playing, you know, Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell, just good looking people falling in love in Australia. But they wake up from their, you know, one night stand, right? And she leaves right away. And she's like, I, I just, I didn't know what to do. He was so sweet, I had to leave, right? Of course, Glenn Powell doesn't really understand this. And then a friend comes over and is like, yeah, I just had to get her out of here, you know, trying to act tough. But unfortunately, Sydney Sweeney hears this. And then of course, they hate each other. But a few years down the line, we find out that Glenn Powell's friend is now marrying Sydney Sweeney's sister. And they're all going to the wedding in Australia. It kind of feels like an Adam Sandler movie, right? You have a group of people with not much personality going to a destination. And of course, all the crew and all the cast and all the filmmakers get to go to Australia, right? It definitely feels like that. But then what happens, right? Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell have to pretend to like each other to make sure that everyone gets along at the wedding. And then there's a bunch of different, you know, awkward scenarios, right? Like standard rom-com stuff. But what's crazy about it is that all the jokes felt extremely flat because I don't think Sidney Sweeney and Glenn Powell are very comedic actors. Like there was one part in the movie where she's, you know, trying to do something to his chair on the flight and she keeps messing up. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, this could be really funny if say Melissa McCarthy or Kristen Wiig or a comedic actress was in this part. But you know, the camera zooms in on her boobs and she's just like, oh no, what, what's going on? And again, I haven't seen Sidney Sweeney in anything else. And from what people have told me, she's a really great actress in euphoria and you know i think um uh, was it white lotus I, I don't remember but regardless everyone tells me that she's a really great actress and she can pull off those crying scenes in this movie just fine but i'm thinking if this is the only movie i've ever seen her in and it's the only movie i ever see her in i would think she was a terrible actress and glenn powell didn't really do anything either I, and we made the joke when watching the movie too imagine taking megan fox from transformers right? And you take Taylor Lautner from Twilight and you put them in a movie and they fall in love. Let's be honest, guys. They do not give the best performances in the world in those movies. And they are really cast because they're two extremely good looking people, right? And then of course you have boob shots and dick shots. And again, I'm totally fine with like a hot steamy movie with all these actors being extremely attractive. And it's kind of like the smut book, the movie, right? But when these characters have literally no character and the storyline is a mishmash of, you know, a teenager gossiping like, oh, I heard that Cassandra likes Jessica, but Jessica really likes Brian. But Brian is dealing with his sexuality and he actually really likes Joseph, but Joseph wants to get with Cassandra and it's like, okay, that's fine, but at least have something of substance here, right? And then that's when people will comment down below, your video doesn't have any substance. <laughs> Be a bit more clever with the insults, guys. It's getting kind of pathetic. But that's the thing, right? Like, so many lines of dialogue where they are just, you know, explaining what's happening in the story. There's no, like, visual nature to it. There's no cinematic nature to this. You put in the sappy pop song in there to tell the audience this is how you're supposed to be feeling. Like, this movie is just not good. But I will say that it was entertaining because of how bad it was. It did get into that territory. But there were so many moments where I'm, like, looking at her going, like, this is so bad and she was totally on board so that connection between us watching this you know garbage on screen you know that was a fun time but for an overall movie like I can't recommend this to anybody because I'm fully aware that you know you guys might be seeing a movie that might just be crap and it just might be a crap movie for an overall rating I'm gonna give this movie a one out of five like it's bad it's bad. So there you go, guys. That is my review on anyone but you. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. If you want to join Patreon, the link is down below as well. We have monthly movie nights. I give you guys movies every single month and you get to see content early. So it's a pretty good deal. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.